Welcome everybody to Cup with Gup on this either late Thursday evening or early Friday morning, depending on when you listen to it. Um, we'll be dropping it around halftime of the NFL games when I've been trying to do it um, the last few weeks. That's gone well. Give you time for your Friday morning commute. We are recording a little bit later, earlier on Thursday. Um, right now, we did a big special yesterday on Cup with Gup. We're going to run it through Monday Night Football. Tools and Green Machine are on fire right now. Once again, we had another good week last week. We got NASCAR. We got UFC. We got college football. We got NFL. NBA around the corner. Um, all the final kind of big updates and new tools were released last week. The final touches. Uh, the Green Machine has taken a big overhaul in the last month as well. So with that kind of all being, we're feeling good about it. Uh, I'm opening up the Green 25 Special. Get 25% off any package right now through Monday Night Football. It includes a seven-day trial, so you don't get charged until a week. So if you sign up today, start building your lineups with, you know, for Sunday Night Football, college football. Bobby's already dropped his article. Um, I'm sorry, Thursday Night Football you couldn't do because you obviously just until later. But tomorrow will be... I think a three-game Friday slate, a massive Saturday college football slate uh, with the midseason main event on DraftKings, um, another NASCAR playoffs. We'll get into that here in just a second. And then a huge NFL as well. We have showdown slates, stackability, everything you can think about in the green machine. I will be doing a little preview highlight video as well for you to check out. No risk trial. So use, use the code GREEN25. If you don't like it in a week, you don't get charged ever, not even once. So really good time to get that, that advantage. We don't get that discount very often. Rate and reviews on iTunes. It goes a long way. I will be doing some big giveaways uh, once we get around to some of the bigger um, football games, college football playoffs. And then our, we always do a big, huge deal for the Masters. And I look at those. They mean a lot. If you don't remember if you've done them or you haven't done it recently, Go and do it real quick. Like this video. Subscribe to us on YouTube. That helps out a lot. In the comment section, tell me your favorite game you want to stack outside of the Cowboys-Giants because everybody's going to be stacking that one. And then the last thing here, Underdog. If you haven't done Best Ball, it's the best, best ball app there is. Use the code GUP. Get free $10 when you deposit $10. Their midseason resurrection went live last week. It is 53.4% full. 10 bucks an entry. So if you use that 20 bucks you get right there, when you deposit 10, get free 10, that'd get you two entries. Uh, start drafting. If you sucked at best ball or you forgot about it or you never heard of it and now you want to get in, this is your time. Maybe you got injury plagued in the first five weeks. It starts next week, week six. So jump in now. I'm sure it'll get fill, full over the weekend. They also do daily NFL stuff. They'll have a Thursday and a Sunday night battle royal. Normally five to ten bucks to win with fifty to hundred thousand in prizes there, and they also have best balls for NBA and NHL if you're into that thing too. So a lot going on over there. Use the code GUP. The link is in the podcast. With me as always for this main slate preview is Ryan. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, man. How are you doing today? Busy. It's a uh, fall break for our kids here uh, in Norman. They always do it during OU Texas week, so they are out Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then uh, my mom is having a minor surgery tomorrow, so we are juggling uh, duties and kids, and I'm trying to get ahead because I'm going to be obviously occupied tomorrow um, with that. So a lot going on today. I'm ready to uh, knock, finish all this out, relax, watch some stuff uh, here this evening, and then uh, take care of the family tomorrow. How are you doing? Doing good, man. It should be a good game tonight, too. I'm pumped for tonight's game. I'll be playing some showdown and you know, we'll be in Slack up until then for all our, you know, users and everything. So it's going to be fun. Not really doing much going on today. Took a half day. I'm just kind of going to chill at home after this and relax and wait for the game tonight. Yeah, obviously a big weekend for me. We got, um, you know, OU Texas Saturday. So I'm looking forward to that. It's a, it's a big college football slate in general for, for DraftKings. So there, I'm sure um, Bobby will have us covered there and, and Slack will be hopping for that. And it's week, we got three weeks of NASCAR left or four? Uh, four, four, because okay. we have, uh, there's a road race this Sunday. Um, and then, and I'm actually pretty much finished with that article too. That should drop. I'll probably drop that tomorrow. Um, and then we have three more races, two races in the championship race, I believe, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe three races then the championship race ends like the second week in November, I believe. So is this race this weekend part of the playoffs or is it just a road race? Nope. This will be playoffs. Yeah. This is oh. the last, uh, 
So after this, it'll cut down to uh, to eight guys. But everybody still races. I, I guess I didn't because I noticed when we were watching it Monday because of the delay that, you know, even though there's what there were 16 or whatever it was or in the playoffs, there's still 40 guys racing that week. Yeah, yeah that's kind of. Yeah, a, so they got 37 guys out there this week, but uh, only 12 are still in the playoffs hunt. And then it'll narrow down to eight after this. Um, and then they do three races. So it is three races. Then we'll go to the final four for the championship race. Nice. Big, big slate this week. We got uh, 12 games only as the Jets Falcons uh, will be the Sunday morning game from London. Um, I'll check out the showdown stuff there. If, there. if there's good contests, which there normally is, I'll, I'll do a showstoppers article like I do for Thursday night football, Sunday night football, and Monday night football. Um, not the, best of games i guess but um does leave us only 12 games we don't have a chalky chiefs you know fear of mahomes and whoever going off for 80 points opens it up a little bit we do start it with a what right now is the chalkiest game and i really don't see it not only is it chalky but it's somewhat balanced um compared to some of the other spots we got the Vikings are the, the highest projected owned team for me at 68%. Um, but the Cowboys Giants are 103.2, and that's 15% over that Minnesota game, which is not very balanced. The Bucks are coming in, um, you know, outside of that at 51.6, but Miami is only 11%, so that's a low game. And then the Chargers. So outside of those three, this is the focus of the week. Um, outside of cash, we know you got that cover. What – you know, lots of options here. How do you how do you get different if you're wanting to? We saw last week that, you know, and we kind of called that. We said that Tyreek was probably going to be the play over Kelsey to be different, um, and he and he did smash. I, in my Chiefs deal, I did. I only had one because I wasn't as high uh, in a three max. I did put Kelsey in. Obviously, the, the move was to not even include Kelsey. Um, so. In this type of situation where you got plenty of options on both sides of the ball, we are watching some injury stuff. Uh, me, particularly Shepard, because I think he's priced too low if he plays. Uh, Tony is a guy I love. I've been on him, talked about him in the preseason. As far as if they get him usage, he's a guy that can break at any time. Cooper, he's healthy, but you know he did leave that game a little bit. I, I, I take that back. He played, but I'm not sure he's 100% healthy yet. Cedric Wilson getting involved. Do any of those come to mind, or do you just load up on the stars and, and try to be different elsewhere? No, I like the cheap part of the Giants, like the Tony plays and stuff like that. He looked really good. Um, it's hard to get away from Lamb here because now his price drops down. Like it was a little easier to look at Cooper before when he was, you know, you'd save a thousand bucks or more to go down to him, but now Lamb's sixty two hundred, and it's just like I, I would always prefer him. So I don't know. He will be chalky uh, at that price, but. I feel like he hasn't had a, a big game in a while, and this could be like one of those get right games for him. And then um, Zeke, I, I just can't get away from him. I'll be like, cash this week's tough because like it's going to be a lot of Henry Cook lineups, and then Fournette's pretty much a lock in cash. So those are the three. But it, it's hard for me. If I don't like my receivers, I have no problem playing Elliott over, uh, probably over Cook before I would go over Henry. Um, you know, and just and just roll with that. Because when I looked at it first thing this week, Elliot was like the the lock of the week for me. Yeah, I mean, I can see him. I I mean, I could if you're in a deep um, MME, I could see depending on how the game flow and script you think works out. I could see Pollard getting enough touches to be a MME worthy, but I just think at his price, there's there's still better because I still better options because I still think I agree with you on Zeke a hundred percent. Um, I don't know what the perception in the, you know, just cause he started off so slow. I don't know if people will go there, um, right out the gate, you know, as the week goes along and probably, I mean, I got him at 15%, which isn't horrible at seven, seven thousand dollars. Um, like you said, I do think cook and Henry are in great spots. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, he is my next highest. And then right, in, right below him, I got James Robinson, which I know you talked about him here in a little bit as well, but the 7,000, I guess, worries me, it, it, depending on what we think the Giants could do. Like, if we think the Giants will be able to move the ball and potentially score and keep it relatively close, let's let's call it around the Vegas line, which we got the Cowboys 29.5 to Giants 22.5. So, high, high total, um, game total. And then, 
you know, does do they wind up throwing a lot more? You know, I, I don't know because you saw last week, even Dak. You know, he had a, he had four touchdowns, but he had 188 yards. He didn't need to throw it a lot. The red zones br- didn't break your way if you were on the Cowboys, and I was, um, but I didn't. And then he threw it to like you know Jarwin, and you know the, Wilson got one of the touchdowns. So none of the you know Lamb didn't have a good game per se, and like you said, Cooper could always bust. Um, do you like Daniel Jones at all on this to go that side and and then and then mix up some Cowboys? Yeah, I don't mind Daniel Jones. I don't even mind Daniel Jones in cash either. He's uh he's pretty cheap. Um if you look at his road games too, and I know it's just a small sample size to start the year, but his two road games he averages 30 DraftKings points. So he's just been killing it on the road. But in general, he's been good this year. He's got a nice, nice floor on him this year, and his ceiling is, you know, as high as anyone's with those 30 point games. So yeah, I, I like him a lot. Uh, I like his rushing ability too. Um, that's the one thing that raises his floor. There's another guy down there that we'll talk about too. You know, my, my boy, Trey Lance, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but uh, I like Jones over Lance. I'll just say that for cash. Yeah. My, my only concern with Jones is similar to um, when Dallas played, I can't remember who they played a couple of weeks ago. And, oh, the Eagles is, is Michael Parsons is a beast and, and, and can, negate some of that running but you know well Hertz has design runs a lot Jones I you know maybe more of a scrambling type run he does have some boots that he'll do um if they're clicking you, you know and I and I think I kind of agree with your article I do think Barkley would probably go under own on this slate all things given because of his price and and even last week I said that I said hey you know I, we don't know when that game's gonna bust out but no one's going to play him this week and no one really did. And he did have a good game. So, and I, I think it'll be the similar this week. I think people perceive the Cowboys as a pretty good defense. And, and a lot of that is actual. I mean, they have uh, the Parsons and Diggs couldn't be any greater additions to a team and make a huge difference right now. Um, so I don't hate any of those pieces. I think if you do want to get some stacks in here, I agree, like getting a Barkley or, or starting it with Jones, I think would be more, um, unique than than loading up on the Cowboys and running back a piece or two from the Giants. I think that's what most people will do. Um, but the you know nine hundred dollars savings to Jones isn't bad, and and he does bring a good floor. So I, I agree with all that there. Next up's an interesting game um, on several levels. 49ers Cardinals twenty seven point seven five to twenty two point two five. Cardinals get the big win at the Rams and, and impressively doing it. Wasn't even a, a luck box type deal. Obviously, the Rams were in a little bit of a letdown spot after their huge win against the Buccaneers. Um, I pretty much agree with everything you've written up on the on the site with your full article, so you can go check that out. Um, if you if you're a premium member, you want to join with our discount going. I do I do still like Rondell Moore because I, I think he's going to still be under radar for MME stuff, not necessarily cash. Um, and, and a guy that I like just watching, the, and I watch all the, well, I watch every game, but I, obviously I like Kyler a lot. Um, but now he's popped up on the injury report. But if Max Williams plays, like he's starting to get more and more involved with Kyler. Um, and Kyler hit his tight ends quite a bit at, at OU that I don't hate him to be a little bit different. I guess the, the one thing with Kyler, and I get your opinion on this, is that he, Every game, it seems like he could go different with who's hot, whether it be Hopkins, A.J. Green, Christian Kirk, um, Rondell Moore. So it gets into, unless you stack a big stack, even Chase Edmonds, you know, showed up a little bit on the injury report. Do you just play Kyler and, and you know, hope it hits? Or I know you, you got Trey Lance written up here, which I think could be a decent MME play, and then run it back with several of Kyler's weapons, and you save 2300 bucks. Um, and just hope Lance hits a good enough, you know, mid floor level and, and then you get the right weapons, right? How do you, how do you think, what do you think about that? Cause he doesn't seem to lock into anybody. I mean, last year was a lot of Hopkins, but he definitely spread it out a lot more than he was last year. This is, that's why I think he's, all his weapons are just tournament flyers, really. I mean, there isn't that one guy, like you're saying, that can, that can bust out. Like we saw Kirk, you know, he leads a team in red zone targets last week. He catches one ball. But Kyler still balls out, and they beat the Rams. So it's like, yeah, it's tough to figure out. Um, with this game, too, like, and I know that I'm the, the 49er fan who's sour because everyone's hurt again, but, like, I just don't think they're very good right now. Their number one corner is Drake or Patrick. Like, that's – they just are picking up anyone off the street to go play secondary, and that also increases the chances that more guys will be open throughout the game. 
so he can spread it around. So I just don't really see a way they can stop them here. The Cardinals are really good this year. Yeah, this is a popular pick right now is that the Cardinals will be let down and the 49ers are going to win. And in most case, our cover at least, in most cases, um, in you know, similar to kind of the Rams coming off the big win type of deal. But I, I agree with you because this, this defense for the 49ers is so banged up and Kyler's so damn good that um, he'll take advantage of that. So with the Cardinals playing better D, and this is going to be Trey Lance's first start. It is is he officially out, um, Jimmy G? I don't think it's official, but I'm I, I think it is. It's like as close as you can get without Shanahan actually saying it. Okay, that, that's why I thought. I knew he wasn't. I didn't think he'd be ruled out yet, but it looks more likely that Trey will play. I agree with your. You know, if people are looking at box scores, like oh, Lance came in and pretty good. You know, I could have scored that seventy-five yard touchdown last week. That when Debo caught the ball, I have no idea what Adams was doing there, but. I'm also not downplaying him because he does have some rushing upside um, and he's super cheap. So I think he's viable, but I do think the Cardinals win and, and score. I don't want to say it will, but I do think they'll be able to score pretty well against this team. It, my opinion would be if you're going to go in on this, I would take one of two routes. It would either be play Kyler naked and just, just build around there or make sure you're overweight in your stacks and mix and match different combos um, I guess the one question, because if you go Kyler, is there anybody on the on the 49ers you want to run it back with since you can't go two quarterbacks? I know Trey was really the only one you talked about. Um, and I kind of agree with that. I don't I mean, I guess maybe Debo just because he seems to continue to be consistent. Um, but is there anybody you want to run it back with if you're doing a Cardinal stack? I think if you're if you're trying to stack this game, then Probably the most unique one would be Chase Edmonds because his price has gone up a little bit after having a 100-yard game last week. That really came on one big run, but he's still been consistent all year long, and he hasn't scored yet. And he's going to score eventually. So if you if you do like Lance and run it back with Edmonds, something different like that, and you expect the Cardinals to be ahead, they're running the ball more, um, that's a good way to get Lance's garbage time and the time Edmonds will be running the ball more at the end of the game. Uh, and it? they're both cheap, 57 and 5,900. Is there any weapon from the the 49ers you like if you're if you have a big cardinal stack and you're picking one weapon? So the hard part, so here's my Trey Lance take of the the century here. It, I don't think he's very good. I mean, like everyone thought he'd come in and start this year and everything like that. He couldn't beat out Jimmy G for the job. If Lynch and Shanahan thought he was the better quarterback to help them win right now, I think that's why they traded everyone to, to draft him where they did and he would have started over Jimmy G. So if you take out the Debo throw last week, he's he's only completing half his passes, like 50% of his passes were complete. He, th he completes eight pass for like 80 yards. And so I just don't think there's really much there to go with. And then Trent Williams left the game hurt. So if he doesn't have his left tackle, that's a top five left tackle in the league. That doesn't help him at all. Mm -hmm. And I think this game is just going to be like the most read options that we've seen all year long by one team. And that's the only way to keep the ball out of Kyler's hands and to limit Trey Lance, you know, do what he does best. So you have some RPOs later on in the game, stuff like that. So I think he's a good candidate to just play naked. He could punch in all the TDs near the goal line should they get down there. And, yeah, if he does throw one lucky TD, I mean, last week Ross Dwelly caught a TD. So, like, it's hard to really pick who's going to do what. Yeah, I I mean, I like Debo, but the $7,100 price really makes it tough if you're doing a, a Cardinal stack. So, you, you may just stack the Cardinals and move on, go get some one-off pieces. Or like you said, go Trey, um, run back with some Cardinals. And I think that'll be way more unique than what the other people will do <clears throat> in that game. Next yeah, if game. He, if he, if they keep it close, he has a realistic path to, to have like 15 pass attempts. So it's hard to like, he's going to have to do it with his legs or, or bust in, in my opinion. So it's, it's a tough one to, this week. I, I like, I see a lot of people playing him in cash. I just couldn't do that with Daniel Jones right above him. I, I agree with that, and I do think the Cardinals are potentially live um, defense this week at twenty nine hundred bucks, um, just because they've been so active with getting sacks. And if, if, like you said, if Williams is out, I, I really think that boosts potentially the Cardinals being in play on D, because um, that's a big loss for there. That's another former senior sooner. Um, that'd be a huge loss. He's a he's a great left tackle. Packers Bengals twenty seven point two five twenty three point seven five. Uh, pretty high scoring affair here. 
Bengals at home. Bengals looking good. Um, this is Bobby Burger squad. Uh, Packers looking confident. I agree with pretty much your entire uh, there. I still like Cobb um, because of the same reasons I did last week. I don't think that's going to stop. I don't. I'll be. I mean, I'd be. I'd be a fool if I said that I predicted that kind of game. But I. I was all over Cobb. I said he was my favorite low end play. Narrative Street um, in Sunday morning. I reemphasized that because we had even more cheap wide receivers come open. I was like, hey, I just like Cobb because I think Rodgers wanted to prove that, see, I see, that's why I have him here. And that's exactly what he did. Do I think it happens again? No, but his price didn't really increase that much. Um, so outside of if he come, becomes chalky, I probably wouldn't go there. But I still like him because I still think Rodgers will get him involved. But I do 100% agree that I think this could be a, an Adam smash game. And I do love the Higgins call if he's healthy. I, I need him in my season-long league. He, he, you know, he was one of my big targets and hasn't been able to play. So I think he could be a little under the radar if he winds up playing. It looks like it's leaning that way that he should be able to suit up. But that's something to monitor. Um, what are your thoughts here? Yeah, that's kind of how how I wrote it. I, th I think if Higgins plays, he'll be, you know, 100%. And so when he's out there with Chase and with Boyd, he's the one seeing the majority of the targets. It's a small sample size. Yes, only those two games. But coming into the year, I liked Higgins more than Chase anyways. And Burrow was saying how comfortable he felt throwing to Higgins all the time. So it's like, I just, I like Higgins. So if you get the guy who potentially could have the highest target share on the team at the lowest price of all the receivers on the team, then yeah, I'd go after that. Hopefully his ownership's down too. He has that, you know, red Q next to his name and that helps keep everything down. Right. And then yeah, Adams last week, he saw all the targets. It just didn't go his way. Um, but he's still double digit targets again. I mean, anytime you're going to give him 11, 12 targets in a game, he can catch multiple TDs. He can hit a hundred yards. The sky's the limit for him. Yeah. And I, I don't, you know, the Packers D is playing okay compared to maybe, you know, what we would have thought, um, but their secondary is still, you know, susceptible to giving up plays and, and, and Burrow's good. Let's not, I mean, Burrow's definitely, I think kind of said this a couple each week that goes along. I think he'll get more comfortable um, trust in the knee, all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know. Who do you think uh, Alexander will, will key on? Let's say they're all healthy. I, I don't think they will. I think they'll he'll just play whoever comes to his side, and, and that's how they'll roll here. I mean, he's he's been good, but he hasn't been – like he went on that one stretch where he was just shutting everyone down. He hasn't really been that guy. Um, so I, I don't think they really fear him. And, uh, you know, I can't really see him targeting on one of these guys here. Chase has been like the bigger play threat, so maybe that. So right. I can't stretch the field as much, but – no, and I agree. I mean, if you get some, if we have some inkling by Sunday that, you know, it looks like he's going to uh, be on one of those, that would definitely sway. But if it's more of a rotation, um, I think it helps if Higgins is active because it, it just gives another weapon. You know, uh, Alexander can't cover them all. So if there's three out there now that are strong, um, it definitely helps the case there. You didn't write up either quarterback. Do you have any any, any interest in what could potentially be a high-scoring game? I, think, I don't think the Bengals are going to be stopping anybody per se. We know the Packers D can give up rushing and all that. Uh, we need to see what Joe Mixon looks like. Um, P. Ryan's a stud. I mean, he's, I say he's a stud. He, he's a workhorse. Um, and if Mixon is out, I haven't – you know, haven't. I'm still early where I hadn't gone full into the um, update on injury stuff yet – I don't mind P Ryan um, against this rushing defense. Cause he'll, I mean, he had it one time. I mean, the most rushing yards in college football in a, in a single game. Um, he's not mixing ver He's not a big, anything out of the backfield, but he's kind of like Henry, but just much, you know, smaller. I don't mind him because he's probably the men price, but if Mixon's in there, um, certainly could see him doing well against this defense, but anything on the quarterbacks or just too, too many other options you like. Um, I was close to like, I could see playing Rodgers. I just like it, you know, a favorite on the road here. And if I'm thinking it's a get right game for, for Adams to just bounce back off that last week, then there's a couple TDs there. And I also like, you know, he targeted Tanya in seven times. He only had two catches, but some of those were in the red zone too. So I, I think a big, one of those tournament, you know, breaking games for Tanya's coming up with one or two TDs. Uh, it's hard to, hard to know when, but there's a pretty good matchup here for it. He does like him in the red zone, though. I mean, he'll look his way. He's definitely worth um, 
what's his price? Uh, it's only 43. 40, yeah, 43. So I got him at sub 3% ownership right now. So that, that could be a good play um, as well. Next game is Browns Chargers. Chargers favored 24.25 to 22.75, close to a pick em. Um, I like the Browns here as a live dog to to win. I know they're on the road. Um, I'm not as still not as big of a believer in Chargers as what some are. I think they're a good team. I don't know um, if they're a great team yet. They have a great quarterback who can make some things happen, but they're not. You know, they're not perfect. Now their defense looked good against the Raiders. Uh, definitely caused some havoc there. I think this is a letdown spot as far as everybody's going to smash the Chargers. The Chargers going to be a huge public play. The Browns didn't look good. It was an ugly game versus the Vikings. But I think they match up well here. Um, OBJ was one of my favorite plays last week. And if Baker could, you know, fucking throw a ball <laughs> that, you know, he just, just missed him so many times. There were wide open touchdowns. Um, you know, a little frustrating there, but that happens, but that could come back to, you know, regress to the positive. And I still, I still like OBJ in general. What are your thoughts on this game? I know you didn't write up a ton of guys on the cash side, but uh, tournament side, what do you like? I like Chubb a lot. I think it's like uh, the Charger Cowboy game. Like the Cowboys knew what to do on offense, and the Chargers kind of they play right into how the Chargers play defense. They they have a run funnel type defense, and you can and the Browns have that rushing offense that's you know second to none. So I, I think there's a chance here that they just run all over the Chargers, and Chubb comes in at 6,700, which is just I don't know. I think it's kind of stupid in this matchup. And so that's probably, that's one of my tournament calls this week is that you'll need, you'll need Nick Chubb, uh, his hundred yards and a couple TDs in this one to do anything big. I, I really like him this week. Do you have any interest in hunt as well or, or just go, go Chubb and move on? Uh, I just got this feeling that they're going to, you know, get Chubb some TDs again here. I mean, he had that, the multiple TD game, game one, um, you know, in a similar situation, as this game. So I just, I just can see the same exact type type thing happening here. Um, and he's at this price, like I don't think we'll ever get him this cheap again. So I, I really, really like Chubb this week. And then you get Mike Williams price stayed the same. I don't mind him or Herbert here coming back, but Keenan Allen seems cheap at 6,500. I think it'll be very popular, but that's for good reason. And he only has like one less red zone target than Mike Williams, but like three less touchdowns in those situations. So I think he could score more too coming up here. Yeah, and I, I agree with you know. So you got these are one of those games you're scripting out, and and if you think the the Browns are going to control the ball, control the clock, and they're smart enough to know, hey, we want to keep the Chargers off the field because that offense you know can be potent and move down the field, and and if we can run on this team all day, we'll keep doing it. Um, so it brings down value on some of the receivers for the Browns, but it also if they're successful as we think they would be, it hurts the chargers because they could have less possessions and stuff like that. So you don't want to go all in on that side. I do agree with the Allen price being a little low um, there. I, I don't know why. I mean, cause I, I get it. I talked about that for the, the, I think it was a Sunday night. When did they play Monday night or Sunday night, Sunday night? Um, you know, they had him way less priced than Mike Williams. And I, I still don't, I don't know if it's quite the Cooper cup, Robert Woods situation, but um, you know, I don't think Allen's dropped off that much in anybody's eyes. He just kind of hadn't had the big game like, you know, Mike Williams has had. And at that, at that price, I, I certainly wouldn't mind. And this is a game that you, we talked about last week. I think you can, you can have your stacks elsewhere and come pick up a Chubb and an Allen or, you know, just one piece from here or there and, and be perfectly fine. I don't think you have to get into, into a big um, scripted game here. It could wind up being a little bit lower scoring. Chargers games have been lower scoring than – um, project, projected, you know, the Cowboys I saw game, something, the Raiders uh, game. Yeah, I saw that every opponent they've played or something, they've held them to their lowest total. I believe that was the Chargers. Um, and I know, too, Keenan Allen has a lot of – not a lot of drops, but he's got some key drops this year, too, that really, like, are box score changers. So, he could – I don't think he's going to keep dropping the ball like he has been. So, the next game is probably one of the interesting for me. Um, Vikings Lions twenty nine twenty is the uh, breakdown on the Vegas spread. Both of these teams kind of hurt me on what otherwise was a really good week for me as far as the, my spots. But I, I liked Cook last week. Um, 
I, I liked a lot of the Vikings. I mixed and matched them in several different little one-offs, and I had some Jefferson OBJ and little mini stacks. Um, I had some Swift and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, Swift doesn't nearly get the touches that we thought he would get. I don't know if that's, you know, just a pure one-off week, but they're still going to try to get him involved. I think he's a good talent. Um, only 20 points on the board for Vegas for Lions this week. Is there? I saw you didn't write up any Lions, but tournament-wise, is there anything you take a, a dart on? I agree with you on Cook. I do think it's another good smash. If he doesn't smash this week, you know, I'd probably get a little worried. Like, you, if you can't run on the Lions, the Vikings got a lot of issues. Um, I'm not opposed to some stacks there when you talk about Cook with – uh, even Cousins is in play here at 6,500 uh, at home. He's always going to do well and, and then pick a wide receiver too. I, I, it surprised me Thielen was 1,100 less than Jefferson because he's still – I consider him still Cousins' favorite target in the red zone. So I think you could save some money there. Uh, and if I was going to run it back, I would, the only people I would even probably think about is still Swift if we think some kind of way he get, does get involved. And I still don't mind Hawkinson because if he, you know, he can still, he's kind of expensive. He'll be low owned. Uh, but outside of that, I'd be all on the Vikings here. Yeah, you get low ownership on Swift and Hawkinson because they just, they keep burning everyone. Um, and the price doesn't go down. So like they, they each are coming off duds and their price stayed the same. So I'm, no one's really going to go back there. Uh, it's hard for me to click anyone on that team. Campbell said now that, he said Swift was going to touch the ball more. Didn't do it. And now they interview him this week, and he says it's going to be scheme-related. So who knows what's going on in his mind. It's hard to play any of those guys. The Vikings in matchups like this, multiple times this year, all four of them were, were relevant and smashed in the same game. Or And then even more times than that, three of them did. So I have no problem playing Cousins Cook and one of the receivers and just letting them roll on on this line's off our defense. Lions defense is so bad that they can they can put up 30 points here easily. And, you know, I just – I really like the Vikings in this spot. I don't think the game will be close. Uh, so, I also like Vikings defense. But, um, yeah, I, I think I like three of these guys. You just got to pick between the wide receivers and, and let it roll. Yeah, and I wouldn't – I hadn't seen – what I know he's been kind of quiet, but I wouldn't rule out um, Osborne. I don't know what his – as long as he's still pretty – relatively cheap this week um there he is so i got him as 29 so 3800 i mean i wouldn't rule that out if you really want to go heavy um clearly not as because now they're starting to get um conklin involved right i mean he's mm -hmm. it, it, to, to some extent those are cheap that makes a unique stack there i think the four the big four are obviously where you want to be but if you wanted to like take a chance and fade Jefferson and add in, you know, Osborne or Conklin, that stack in itself would be unique. But I like those four. I'm a big Jefferson fan. I was huge on him last year. Um, and like I said, tournament play only. I maybe we run it back with Swift or Hawkinson. But outside of that, I don't want I don't want much uh, to do with the Lions right now. Uh, next game is interesting to me: Titans Jaguars, twenty six point two five, twenty one point seven five. I was a little surprised by um, your, I don't want to say love for the Jags, but definitely have a lot of options there. Mainly, I believe, probably um, relative to pricing. My biggest concern, and Henry's obviously, that's just up to you if you want to smash him or not. Um, are you concerned at all with the locker room potential issues coming out of this game and the Jags laying a dud? No, I think against this Titans defense, I'm not worried about it. If they had a tougher matchup, like if they traveled somewhere playing a tough team, maybe, but they're home uh, and the Titans defense is just pathetic. So it's, it's a good spot for them. Uh, and like you said, they're all, their prices are all so low that they're intriguing. Like it'd be hard to play anyone, you know, outside of Robinson or Chenault and cash, but this is a great spot for Lawrence and Lawrence has used his legs more every single week. So it's like, he's getting more comfortable here. Um, yeah, and, and like Marvin Jones still 5,700, Chenault 4,800, Sharks gone, kind of narrows down the target tree here. Uh, I think it's a good spot to hit. And then you got the Henry run back, um, which the 9,000 doesn't really kill you when you're coming back with all these cheap prices. No, and I think the narrative street will be, you know, Jags are going to come out, you know, they hate their coach, there's issues. They're going to get spanked here, but they are at home. 
Um, they're still paid football NFL players. And once you put the pads on, you know, most of the time that stuff doesn't necessarily cover over. I think they have a high character um, quarterback that can lead this team in that situation, regardless of what's going on in the locker room. Uh, I mentioned that last week, exactly what you said. I said Lawrence continues to use his legs more and more. And 5,800 is a very cheap price to start some stacks with. Absolutely love Chenault. Um, I thought he was going to be a guy that I was going to die on the hill with because I kept loving him last year and he would shine, then he would just go away. And this year it was kind of like, you know, it would, but with Chark out, they, he immediately, t- you know, got more um, targets. And Jones has been, you know, reliable for sure for Lawrence. So I don't mind any of those at all. And I, I think Robinson, um, like I said, he's going to be one of the top five owned running backs. So you could – you know, if you just want to go all the passing game with, with the Jaguars and then run it back with Henry, I don't hate that. I think one thing to know, you definitely want to see what goes on with Julio and AJ. If they're both out again, do you go back to the to the wide receivers or you just go Henry and, and leave it at that? I'd just go Henry, leave it at that. I'd be very interested if, like, AJ's back or something and Julio's out to go, uh, you know, to add Tannehill in here with AJ as a potential – you know, stack off of Henry or even the full stack of all three. Um, they're kind of like the the Vikings when it was just those three guys. They had a lot of big games last year. Right. I know it's kind of a new offense this year, but this is the matchup they could do it again. Um, and then you run back with Robinson or something like that or one of the receivers. But it's a good good game to stack, uh, especially with AJ coming back off injury. His price is low, so. Yeah, and I, I mean, I have this as the – eighth highest game at a 12 so not a lot of love in the general market it's pretty balanced though 35 percent to 27 percent um between these two teams so i definitely i I think that's a good way to go and and could be unique this week um perception on jags that they just suck but i you know i've watched the games in the film and lawrence will continue to get better and better i don't like the distraction um outside of the field for this week i like if that wasn't there at all i would, this would be probably one of my favorite games to get pieces of um you'd have no ownership too like with lance right underneath him and daniel jones right above him there would be like no one's gonna click his name when they can just go down the lance or up to jones yeah and i think he could equally have as good a game as jones this week um it's 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 in the realm of possibility so i i do like it and if you don't want to go henry because maybe for whatever reason um you can start Jack stacks and it allowed you to get up to some high price pieces in other games, whether it be cook or, um, you know, the, some of that cowboy stuff, it'd be a great way to start a stack and run it back w- with the, with the expensive pieces. Um, so I, I like that a lot. Uh, we're on the same page there. Bucks dolphins, 29, 19 predicted score bucks favored by 10. For me, this looks like a letdown spot for Tampa. Your article kind of leans towards you think Brady may be fired up and ready to go. Um, I love Fournette in this game. I loved him last week. He was, I was on the cusp of the uh, Millie maker in the Sunday night football game. Um, was in third place with the last drive or so, drive and a half to go. Um, you know, didn't work out as well, but still, still made a little bit of profit on the day. But um, I still like Fournette. I think more and more that that's their guy and he's going to continue to see more. And his price didn't really go nowhere. He's 5,200. I love that price. Um, and I like the pieces you put out for for the Dolphins. I do worry about this being a sluggish, low scoring Bucks D secondaries a little bit, you know, bang, banged up. So I don't mind Devontae Parker and Gasecki, like you said. I'm pretty much in line with you here. Um, I just worry about the letdown spot in general, and that's probably more from a betting angle than. Um, but I don't think I'd get to Brady. Like I'd, re- I'd rather just get some pieces and, and move on because I think there's a lot better quarterback play. But if you um, think that he could potentially come back fired up, you know that that's a it's worth looking at because I don't think many people will go to Brady this week. Yeah, I don't think many will, and I just I guess it's my own narrative of like Tom Brady. You know, goes after that tough game going to New England. He completed half his passes, didn't throw a touchdown, and now he goes home in a pretty soft matchup. Like, I don't know. I I could see him throwing three or four TDs here. Uh, It's his price is ridiculous at seventy four hundred, but I mean he has he has paid off at that price before. Um, It's crazy leverage off Fournette. If Fournette rushes for eighty yards and doesn't score, doesn't really catch any passes, and he's super high owned, then. You know, if Brady and Godwin and Evans and all those guys are doing all the work, then that kills all the Fournette owners. 
Yeah, and Brady, you know, he's my raw points. He's my highest projected points on the week. So I'm definitely not against him. It's just more about, like you said, the price and the risk. Because if it goes the other way, you know, and it's a Fournette game and they get up big quick or whatever happens, a defensive touchdown, something crazy, um, you know, then Brady could just shut it down and, and they can coast to a win. So you almost want to think, if you like the Bucks, that the Dolphins do enough to keep it somewhat competitive, which I think they can – because they're not going to try to run a ball. Uh, we know that they're going to, they're going to, you can't run on the bucks a, and then B, um, you know, with their injuries on the D line, you know, that it's not as much. And so you get a little bit more time to pass. And I think they're going to have to try to pass the ball and their, and their secondary is a little banged up as well. So I don't hate that spot. I mean, at, at all, like you said, I don't hate that. If you think the dolphins can stay competitive and in the betting market, I do think that because I, I would, I would lean to take the dolphins plus to 10 this week. Um, so that, that could be a good, cause that's definitely a, a lower own game. Not, not many people are going to this game with everything else on the slate. Yeah. I like Parker and Gasicki too. Like uh, they're seeing a lot of targets um, and Fuller just hit the IR. So that, that helps out that as well. And then Shock, like you said, the game does stay news. close. Yeah, and if the if the game does stay close, like you said, or even if the Bucks get ahead, I think Fournette's the man now. Like he's just he's seeing the most touches out of the backfield. And then what I posted in the article too is just all like what the four starting running backs have done versus the Dolphins this year, and it's all basically they get a hundred yards in a TD in every game. So it's, it's a, right. the best spot he's been in all year for sure. Um, now we get into the next several games a little bit quicker. Um, not as much fantasy goodness. This next game I like decently. Raiders uh, Bears 24.75 to 19.25. But more so, and I think you just based on how you wrote it up, more this is a one-off game for me. So I can come pluck pieces out of here. I don't really want too many stacks. Um, the Raiders seem to spread it out you know, pretty well. Um, Waller can have a monster game or he can absolutely go away at times. Um, I don't mind him this week, but you know, I like Damian Williams getting the start against the Raiders. He just, you know, at that price, I think he's viable. He could be a one-off play. Renfro continues to see a ton of targets and then Waller. Those are about the only three that I may come pluck. If you want to go Edwards, which was my egg on the face play this week. I loved him. I thought he'd have a big game. Um, Raiders just really didn't do much on offense in general. Um, where you at all, any of that, anything else besides that, or the way you wrote up, it didn't look like you have too much interest in the game. No, I mean, uh, I like the Damien Williams play, you know, Montgomery's out. He seems to be the only one there. I don't think they're going to put anyone out there to catch passes. Uh, you know, so if you play him, hopefully there isn't like that uh, Rod Smith type guy that comes out and kills a day like he killed Hubbard's last week. Um, but I think Williams will be the man for all three downs. He was already taking some passing work away from Montgomery earlier in the year. So that's a good sign that they like him there. Um, and he has experience doing that, you know, with the Chiefs and stuff. So um, and then Renfro, Renfro has just been running these crazy routes. I don't know if you've seen it on Twitter mm -hmm. or not, but they, he's like he's dancing out there. It's crazy. Yeah. And uh so he has one less red zone target than Waller this year. So he's like, he's playing this awesome role for this team and he's getting open. That's the main thing. He's earning the targets. And so he's only 4,900. That's a good price. I don't think he's not the guy who's really going to go out and get a hundred yards receiving, but if he's going to get seven, eight targets and have a good role in the red zone, he's only 4,900. That's not bad. No. And I think you could play him as a one-off, like I said, or kind of like we were doing with OBJ and Jefferson last week, you come get Williams and, and Renfro and that's it. That's all you have to worry about. And I, I mean, I agree. Or if you want Waller, that's fine. I, I consider Waller a, a wide receiver one more than I do the tight end just because he's way outpriced to any other tight end. So if you're playing him, you're assuming him to be up there um, like a wide receiver one. And I don't hate that. But outside of that, I, I agree with you. There's not much else I'm interested in in this game. Um, I hope Fields does well. I guess, I, I guess you know, like season long and, and even on prediction strike, I went and bought some shares of Mooney. Um, with Fields being named the starter, I believe Mooney will uh, be a lot better. But I don't know if it's this week because the Raiders secondary is it's pretty good. Watch the injuries because a couple of them got banged up. If we wind up having some injuries for the Raiders secondary, I would play Mooney as a one-off for sure. Um, uh, outside of that, that's about it. Eagles-Panthers, 24.25 for the Panthers, 20.75. Probably the biggest deal here is is – are we going to see C-Mac? Yeah, I don't know. Um, is he expected back? Is he getting activated? 
It looks that. I mean, he practiced the last two days. Last I saw, he's he's back practicing. I did, it, but the coach just said it doesn't mean we're gonna play him. But I mean, it. What'll be the worst is if he plays, but you gotta decide between. You know, is he gonna get a limited role? Um, absolutely would kill. You know, Chuba's value. Um, gotta watch that. And that's probably gonna. I don't know. Are they at home? Yeah, they're at home. So they, they, you don't. Sometimes you can find out a little earlier if he doesn't make the trip, but being at home, we may not find out until Sunday morning. So that, that will change quite a bit um, yeah. in this game if he plays. I don't know what his price is. He's 8700 So I don't know if I get there if he plays because I don't know how much they're going to try to – you know, let's just say he's active. It, it may be a partial working back in or – I don't know. That will be a Sunday morning, you know, uh, the audible chat talk. If he doesn't play, then yes, I think Hubbard's a great play. Um, I don't mind Darnold. We're seeing he obviously loves rushing him some touchdowns in, which kind of kills. Um, <laughs> I think that goes away if McCaffrey's back, though, because I think they want to use McCaffrey more than they would Darnold. But what are your thoughts here? Let's assume McCaffrey doesn't play. Where what are you? Where are you at? I like Hubbard a lot for tournaments only. Just you know, I don't. To me, this game would play out where the Panthers are winning. Uh, so it'd be more of just, you know, Rod Smith's not going to go out there and take all the carries. He was out there catching passes. So if they're in a good game script here for Hubbard, you know, he could see a lot more carries. And then, like you said, I don't think Donald's, I mean, I, I don't think, I can't see him running this many TDs in all year long. He's just running these read options at the goal line and pounding them in. Like at some point Hubbard's going to score those. And when CMC's in there, they give him the ball, but Right. Um, if, if he's out and Hubbard's in, you know, this is like a good spot too, where Hubbard just burned everyone. But if he's in a game script where he can get 20 plus carries and maybe punch those in at the goal line, then yeah, that's an awesome play. Where, and where you at on Hertz? It seems like you probably lower than most, um, on his upside. I, I like Hertz, obviously, um, you know, Plato you, and I think he, he scored well this year. Um, some of it's been garbage time, um, my, but I don't know if I can get the, the price is what gets me off him this week at seven thousand. I, I, he's not going to be high owned at that price. Um, I just think there's other options on the slate. I'd go. I mean, like I'd pay a hundred dollars less for Dak all day uh, over Hertz. Um, any love there? Just absolutely no go. No, I don't. I don't like him this week. I mean, like if Dak can Dak through the four TDs, but he's held the one eighty eight. Like if Hertz is held the one eighty eight, I don't see him throwing four TDs you know, maybe not even one. So they struggle down there. So it's, he has that rushing upside, but I just don't think this is the matchup for him. He had the cake matchup last week. It's not going to be the same for him this week. No. And I think you have cheaper, same rushing upside. Like we talked about Trevor Lawrence, um, Jones. Uh, we're going to get to another one in this next game. Um, Heineke at 5,900, not as much rushing upside, but he's $1,100 less. So I definitely agree with that. So with, with that, the Saints versus Washington football team, almost a pick them, 23.25, 21.25. So one or two point spread, depending on where you're looking. This is at Washington. Um, I, I agree with you here on most, but I would, I don't see myself getting to Henry this week. I mean, uh, Kamara this week, because I'd rather go cook or pay up for Henry. Um, I like the Washington pieces. Uh, this is kind of reminds me of the 49er play last week. Um, didn't work out because your boy got hurt and didn't come out in the second half. But you, know, you get Heineke at 5,900. Um, McLaurin you could pay up for. Curtis Samuels is a great cheap spot. Um, this is probably more of a pieces game. I don't really do any big stacks. Uh, anything stick out to you tournament-wise? I know you're a little low on the cash side here. Um, yeah, just the, just those guys that you mentioned. I mean, and the Camara thing's more just like, I don't know. Will they ever, his usage is so frustrating. I mean, how do you have that guy on your team and you don't target him one time in a football game? I mean, that's, that's how you lose to the giants. That's, that's it. Like your game plan obviously sucks at that point. You're featuring a backup quarterback over your stud running back. It just is so, it's so weird how these guys think. And so I don't know, but Washington's defense is very bad. I mean, they're giving up a lot of points. So, you know, Kamara's like his price is just is kind of disgusting if he's not going to get any targets in the pass game. And that's that's the thing is like, what's a what's a touch worth to me? Like if Zeke, everyone's worried about Zeke getting, you know, 60 percent of the snaps or whatever. 
But if he touches the ball 18 times, that's been worth way more than Kamara touching it 26 times. Right. So, you know, that's just – it's hard to get to Kamara. I think you're you're dead on there. At the price for me it is, especially like you said, now – now they can make adjustments and and say we're going to get him involved in the in the passing game this week for sure. Um, he's always like a darling though, especially when McCaffrey's either out or not on the slate. People love going back to him, and they'll go to him over Henry because the 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 stat guys, which you know I'm analytical, but I also use my eyes, will just trust that you know regression will come back. He's going to get passes. Henry really doesn't, although we have seen Henry used in the passing game a little bit more this year. Kamara's probably going to be half the ownership, so I can see that being a reason to take a chance there, no doubt. I just, I just don't see it personally myself. Um, are you? So you wrote up Samuel. You, you think you know he's only three thousand, so it doesn't take much. Obviously, they're easing him back in, but um, you know, I think he could have a big game before his price goes up. Yeah, and Lance, uh, or not Lance, um, Thomas hit the. Um, IR this week too. So he was one of their main targets yes. and uh, Deami Brown, they just don't seem to like it all. So I think they're trying to find a way, you know, to get Samuel back out there earlier than later. They did take it very easy on him last week, but he did catch all four of his targets. So, you know, if more coming his way, they were all super uh, short yardage too. Like he has more potential than that uh, yep. to make a play. So, you know, I do expect way more out of him. So while he's 3000, I think you gotta, you gotta hit it. <sighs> Sills Jones interest you with Thomas Al? I saw they brought in the uh, Packers former Stein, Steinberger, Jay Steinberger. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't. I'm probably just depth. I think Sills Jones would be the guy, but um, just because of how much Heineke has looked at the tight end, do you think that continues, or do you think it was just a Logan Thomas deal? I think it was a Logan Thomas type thing. He's a he was good. You know, every quarterback that went out there loved loved Thomas. So Seals Jones, I think, would be the pass catcher. Sternberger's like a, just a roster spot. Right. Uh, maybe go out there and block and stuff. But uh, Seals Jones would be like the pass catching tight end. I just think that uh, this is this is the time to play Samuel. I think that they're trying to find ways to to get him the ball and get him more involved. So I think he only ran like 14 or 15 routes last week. You know that that could double this week, and uh, and it'd be really nice at 3,000. No, I agree. I like that spot uh, for sure this week. I think he's a great plug in a lot of rosters um especially mme type stuff last two games are not um for people that love high scoring football uh we have the pats and the texans 24.25 and 15.25 for the texans um and i'm not sure they get to the 15 uh not a lot here i agree with you maybe some damian harris uh jacoby myers continues to be a target monster um outside of that that's i don't i kind of agree with you that's that's where i would be yeah i don't like anyone on the texans and uh those two guys on the patriots would be it i think jacoby myers would be like very high owned this week where damian harris won't so for the same price i mean i think that's like your in-game pivot for tournaments uh no one's gonna click damian harris after two straight duds but if you look at the two games before that when they're not playing the saints and the bucks who no one really just runs all over uh, especially the Bucks. I mean, yeah, like four carries that game, but no running back does anything against the Bucks. Um, now he gets this super soft matchup in another game too, where these Patriots are going to want to, you know, kind of like my Brady thing. Like, I just think they're going to want to go out and prove they can score points against a bad team. And that's what we have here. So, you know, he had a hundred yards to open the season. Um, I could see that, that here, but uh, nothing I'd bank on in cash. Obviously he's just a, also a tournament play. Yeah, and I, I did talk about on the coin flip, um, which you can go check out if you haven't already, that um, Mac Jones is 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 my pay down value potential. He's super cheap, 5300 I mean, there's some other ones we talked about, but they're even more expensive than him. So I like Trevor Lawrence, um, you know, and even going, uh, you know, the Jones route. Um, but 5300 I guess the, the only concern there, like you just mentioned, is if it does get out of hand early – and he's not involved in those early touchdowns, you know, then it just turns into a running fest in the second half. Um, but it could be a showcase game for them. They could be like, all right, here's our chance to get him some confidence. He winds up throwing for, you know, three touchdowns, you know, maybe even run one in, you know, something like that. Um, at that price would just smash and, and don't think anybody's going to be going there um, just because the other options are. So that's a, I mean, that's a tournament play only, but outside of that, no, no interest in this game. 
than what we just said. The next game is um, even worse. Steelers 20.5, Broncos 19. Um, don't – it looks like Locke is going to play. I don't I don't think – I don't know if uh, – what's his name? Uh, Bridgewater's been officially ruled out. He's in concussion protocol, didn't play in the second half. Um, maybe pick a piece, like you say, out of this game if you're one off in it. The, you know, Najee Harris, Deontay Johnson, agree with that just because of the volume. I like Noah Fant when Locke plays. I talked about that earlier in the year, um, but agree with you as prices up there so much that, um, you you know, it's hard to get there in this type of game. It's going to be an ugly game, low-scoring game. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, kind of just exactly what you said. It is a pretty ugly game for fantasy. Uh, but Deontay, I mean, he just remains so freaking awesome. I mean, this guy is always open. Uh, the one touchdown he caught, too, it just, like, perfectly rubbed the corner off his back shoulder, caught it over the shoulder. Like, he's just so good, and he's seeing double-digit targets every game he plays. So, uh, 6,500 is not enough for that. You know, these guys like this who get this usage are up in the 7,000s, you know, consistently, and they just won't put him there because it's Big Ben. But his usage is unreal. So, I like him in cash, tournaments, anything. I think he's just a stud. Yeah, I don't think I'd have – any more than one player from this game on my roster just because of the the game environment. And, and like you said, those are the ones that I would look at as well. Um, Harris is, you know, gets targets, so he's worth it. Broncos D is, is pretty is good, though, obviously, because we got a 39-point <laughs> total. Um, you know, so I, I, I agree. I almost I almost go Deontay Johnson. And, and the reason being is Harris is 6,900. I'd rather take $400 less and take my chances that Johnson at least gets one touchdown. Um, and plenty of targets to go with that. Should be a good slate. Um, any final thoughts for you before we wrap it up? No, I did see one. Like, if I'm looking in cash, I'll just say this. Between Henry and Cook, I'm going to go Henry every time. Uh, I know the Cook matchup is unreal as well. But, I mean, Henry has 30 more carries than any other running back in the NFL. So, I just – it's a weird situation we're in right now where he is just getting the ball that much. And so he only had one TD last week. That's, that's light. I think he can, you know, have another two or three TD game this week. So that's yeah, just my, I, my final thought in cash is I would pick, if you're only going to pick one, there is dark pass. You can play both, but I think I'd be Henry overcook. I, yeah, I agree with that. Um, as well and a lot of people try to jam both like you mentioned when you got guys like Cobb and and Curtis Samuel that people will jam in to get those those two big running backs there that are in good spots um don't forget monkey knife fight 100 percent match up to 100 dollars right now use the code gups g-u-p-s the link is in the description um killed my pga last week hopefully you got on this week's pga i'll have um my favorite College football and Sunday NFL plays are on the coin flip. If you want to go check that out, uh, I released my Thursday night plays earlier, but too late for you guys to check those. But been doing pretty well on, on Monkey Night Fight. They got UFC, college football, NFL, uh, PGA, NASCAR. So you can use any of our guys' content to guide you on there. And I, I release uh, my college football, NFL, and PGA plays on the, these Cup with Cup pods. So now's a good time to go check them out. GUPS gets you a hundred free hundred dollars if you deposit a hundred dollars, or if you do twenty, you get twenty. However, you want to do that. College football pod will drop uh, Friday morning as well. If it is Friday morning when you're listening to this, then you should be able to find that one. Uh, that's a must listen every week. This is a big week in college football, so I wouldn't miss it. Coin flip, like I mentioned, out earlier this afternoon. Cup with Gup was out earlier as well. So that comes out around lunchtime on Thursdays, if you want to know. And I, I go over my full Thursday night um, football type showdown thoughts on that. And then talk a little bit about PGA when we have it um, that week. My live chat will go 10 Eastern Sunday morning. Have a few key injuries that we are going to be looking at. Um, A.J. Brown and Julio and then McCaffrey is going to be a huge one. Um, probably get some thoughts from Ryan on his article um, if that happens, how do we attack that? And like I mentioned to kick it all off, um, uh, come check out our tools and green machine. Now I've never been more confident in what we got out there. Um, I think you'll really love it. We're one of the best prices in the industry. Um, you know, and our value is certainly one of the best in the industry out there. There are a lot of great products out there, no doubt, but I think you'd want to come check us out. Use green 25, get 25% off. It includes a seven day free trial. You won't get charged in the first week, so you can cancel if you think 
Uh, we're not what we thought you were. That's certainly fine. Uh, you never see a charge. So there's really no risk to come check it out now. Hope you guys have a blessed day. I will be back um, Sunday morning with the premium members, and then Monday we'll kick it off with review of uh, Week 5 NFL and PGA uh, Monday morning with Cup with Gup. Have a good day, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks.